and welcome to the Podcast Answer Man Learn How to Podcast 101 video tutorial series, the perfect place to start your podcasting journey today. My name is Cliff Ravenscraft and you can find me at podcastanswerman.com. I started podcasting as a hobby back in December of 2005 about a TV show, Lost. About a year after that, I launched podcastanswerman.com and decided that I would love to do podcasting full-time as my career one day. About two years later, I was blessed enough to be able to grow my brand and my business that I had created around podcastanswerman.com, and I was able to leave my career in insurance in January of 2008 to pursue podcasting full-time as my career. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about my story, you can head over to podcastanswerman.com slash about, and at the bottom of that page, you'll see a video of my blog world presentation where I shared my entire story. I'd like to go ahead and get things started by telling you about the purpose of this tutorial. First off, I want to provide a solid foundation for the understanding of how podcasting works for those of you who are serious about creating a professional podcast. For those of you who already have an existing brand or maybe those of you who are uh, creating a brand new online identity or brand around a new business that you're launching, creating a high quality podcast that sounds professional is extremely important and this tutorial is going to be the first step in that process. It's going to lay the solid foundation you need to achieve great success with your podcast. However, I recognize there are a lot of people who want to get into podcasting just as a hobby. I mean, that's how I got started, right? You never know where podcasting as a hobby might lead you one day. Well, for those of you who are looking to just dip your toes into the waters of podcasting, I want to let you know I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide for how you could actually launch a podcast today, and we'll get into that in just a moment. So what all are we going to cover in this tutorial series? Well, first, we're going to answer the question, what is a podcast? I'm also going to give you an overview of how podcasting works, seeing the big picture. That's even been included here in this first part. We're going to discuss podcast equipment options, website and media hosting recommendations, how to properly set up a podcast RSS feed, how to submit your podcast to various podcast directories like iTunes, Zune, and BlackBerry. And I'm also going to share with you my proven step-by-step -step podcasting workflow from beginning to end and demonstrate it for you in this tutorial series. I do want to let you know that I'm also going to be sharing some products and services that I have to offer you and helping you get your podcast successfully launched, especially for those of you who are very serious about launching a quality podcast. And at the very end of this tutorial series, I am going to be sharing with you a promotion of my podcasting A to Z online training course, which happens to be a four-week training course where you get every single digital training product that I have available for purchase, and actually many that are not available for purchase, and unlimited access to ask me questions during a four-week period of time as you are launching your podcast. As an added bonus in this tutorial series, for especially great for those of you who are wanting to start a podcast as a hobby today, I just want to let you know that if you want to test the waters of podcasting before making an investment in equipment and website and media hosting, I am going to provide you a step-by-step -step instructional guide on how you can create a podcast from scratch 100% free in under 20 minutes. That's at the end of this tutorial series. You don't want to miss that. So what is a podcast? First and foremost, a podcast is a series of digital media files, either audio or video, that are released episodically and delivered through web syndication feeds. Now here's the important thing that you should understand from this, and it's the web syndication feeds or RSS feeds. We're going to talk a lot about that in this tutorial series. I just want to let you know that many people out there in, over the years, ever since podcasting was launched, would claim that they have a podcast. And what they meant by that is they recorded some audio and put a link to it to where people could download that audio off of their website and said, hey, I have a podcast. That, my friends, is not necessarily true. A podcast does not become a podcast unless it can be subscribed to via an RSS subscription. Now, to give you a little bit more of an understanding of what I'm talking about here, I want to give you an overview of podcasting. In fact, I have a pre-recorded 14-minute video that is going to give you that big picture of how podcasting works. This is kind of like putting together a puzzle. 
You know, just have you ever had a thousand piece puzzle and then when you look, look in that box and you're like, how on earth am I going to do this? Well, you have this puzzle box that you want to look at to kind of get a reference for just what it's going to look like when it's done. How does it all, what's the big picture here? And that sometimes is very helpful in getting something launched and, and moving in the right direction. And so that's exactly what I'm going to turn over to right now is this pre-recorded video on the overview of podcasting. What I'm going to do in this video is give you a very basic overview of how podcasting works. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a very simplistic presentation. It is just the basics and it op oversimplifies just about everything. But what I've found is that doing this basic overview of how podcasting works, it really helps people to get the, the big picture, to see the overall, hey, what is literally happening here when I produce a podcast, when I'm actually setting up and configuring a podcast? You know, if you're going through the step by step, the motions of getting everything configured and set up, what does any of this stuff do? And what I have found over the years of doing consulting is that when people have this big picture, it helps them get through the little steps knowing kind of where they're going with what they're working on in each of the steps along the way. So with that being said, we're going to start off right now with recording your audio. Now on the screen here, I certainly have um, my favorite digital audio recorder, the Edderall R-09HR. Unfortunately, no longer manufactured, but there are some other great recorders out there. Now, with this being said, the very first step in the process is simply recording your audio, getting your voice recorded. Now, of course, yes, there are video podcasts as well. I'm fond of audio podcasting, and so when I talk about podcasting, I'm sharing with you audio podcasting, but of course, if you were doing video, it'd be recording your video. But for us, we're going to be talking about today recording your audio. Now, do you need to have an Edderall digital audio recorder? No. In fact, it doesn't matter how you record your audio. Let me tell you, there are a bunch of different ways. You could use a portable digital audio recorder. I know many podcasters out there who only use this the one single device that you see on the screen, and they do a great job, and there are some ways that you can do that. There's some techniques with this recorder that would make that possible. If you're using this recorder like I do, I'm obviously not speaking just into the internal microphones, but I am speaking into a high LPR 40, going into a Mackie mixer and all of this stuff. But I am sending all of the audio out of my mixer into this little audio recorder using the line in jack. You could use Pro Gear and send it into your computer and use free recording software like Audacity or GarageBand on your Mac to actually record your audio as well. You could even use your iPhone or your Android device. There are a ton of applications out there that will turn your handheld phone, your smartphone, into an audio recorder. Uh, one of my favorite applications for doing this on the iPhone is a, is a program by Griffin. It's an app by Griffin Tech, and it's called iTalk, I-T-A-L-K. It records it into an AIF file, and uh, you will need to, of course, turn that into an mp3 file which actually by the way is the next step in the process so basically what we have here is once we have our recording you will want to take that whether it's coming from your digital audio recorder or whether it's coming from your uh, software on your computer or whatever the case may be the end result my recommendation must be an mp3 file now, for those of you who have been recording via GarageBand and you've been creating these M4A files and, and all this AAC stuff, you know, that's great as long as your audience is using an, I, uh, an iPhone, an iPad, or an iPod, or something like that, or maybe a couple other devices out there that have the ability to play those files, but certainly not all of them. And what happens is if you have an MP3 file, this is universal, can be played on practically every single media playing device known to man today. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. So MP3 files are where it's at. It's what I highly recommend. All right, now that we have an MP3 file, what you could do if you wanted to is you could just send that MP3 file as an email attachment to everybody who wants to listen to it. That's not practical, is it? What we are going to do instead is we are going to look at the cloud. That's right, uh, the cloud, aka the internet, whatever you want to call it. Um, there are 
two different aspects of this. Now, I will tell you a lot of people are taking their MP3 files and they're putting them on the same part of the cloud, the same computer that hosts their website. This is a bad idea. And, and the reason for that is because if you upload your MP3 files to the same place that hosts your web, website, if your podcast becomes popular, if you have, happen to get on the Oprah show and, and 10,000 people immediately go and try to download your file, not only is your file not going to be able to be downloaded, your site, your website's not going to be available. And if you're on shared hosting, the thing is, is that, of course, there's probably other people whose websites are going to be down as well. And uh, chances are very high that you probably will get your account suspended for um, an overage of bandwidth. And you might say to yourself, well, I've got unlimited bandwidth. I have no worries in the world. Well, you don't have unlimited CPU cycles. So what I recommend is splitting things up to where you have your media host and your website on two different servers. All right, and the service that I use for my MP3 files online is a service called Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. There are other services out there like Blueberry, and there are even a handful of other services that you can choose that are actually designed to host media files for podcasts that offer true unlimited bandwidth. And there are many reasons why you'd want to do this if you have any desire for your popular for your podcast to ever become popular. If you stick to putting your MP3 files over here, basically uploading them to your website, you're consistently going to be hoping that your podcast never becomes popular, and that's not very smart, is it? So anyway, upload your file to the to your media host that's up in the cloud. Okay, now that you've uploaded your MP3 file to your media host, everything on the internet has an address. Just kind of, kind of like if you were to sell something to somebody on Craigslist and they say, hey, I'm ready to come pick that up. And it's like, okay, well, I'm, I've got it ready for you to come pick up. Uh, and they say, okay, where do you live? So you give them the address to your house and boom, they plug it in, they find you and they come pick up the goods, right? Well, that's exactly what happens with podcasting. So basically what I would recommend that you do is you actually have your website. Your website, and by the way, I would highly recommend using WordPress. It makes all of this stuff so much easier if you do. And so if you have a website especially running uh, WordPress, what you will wanna do is you will actually create a new blog post in, in podcasting, we're going to call your blog post with an audio file on it your show notes. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the address from your media host and we're going to plug that into your website. We're going to put a link to it right there on your website. People can download it. Uh, we're going to use WordPress because that's the best tool out there. And we're going to use a plugin that's going to allow us to put a nice flash audio player so people can come to your website and they can just click the play button and immediately listen to your website or, or to your new episode as soon as you put it on the web. And not only that, but the the thing is, is so far what we have here is not technically a podcast. It's not. It doesn't become a podcast until we add one other major ingredient. And that, my friends, is this thing called RSS. You may have seen a logo that looks very similar to this or if not identical to this. This is what we call an RSS logo. And basically what RSS does, and I'm going to oversimplify this, is it syndicates your website. It makes it available so that people can subscribe to a feed of your content. All of our websites look different from each other. We all design them differently. We put our text and images in all different places and stuff like that. But when, but when it comes to all of us who have websites who have RSS feeds, our RSS feeds all pretty much look exactly the same. We put the title, the, it, the title is always in the same place, the author is always in the same place, the timestamp's always in the same place, in the same format. It's very uniform. And for those who are very used to blogging, you know that you no longer have to go to all your favorite blogs and bookmark them and then go into your bookmarks every day to see if anybody posts anything new. You probably know you can go to a service like Google Reader at google.com slash reader and you can actually subscribe to your friend's blogs and if they post something new, your Google Reader will go to their websites look at their RSS feeds and see if anything's new since the last time time they check. And if there is something new, then it lets you know. 
all of that happens consistently through the use of RSS. Now, there is some initial setup involved of your RSS feed, especially when it comes to podcasting. But once you do that, it's pretty much all automated from that point forward. You shouldn't have to do very much after the initial setup of your RSS feed uh, and configuration for podcasting. So pretty much at this point, once you've done all the initial work, you record your audio, you uh, turn it into an MP3 file, you do a couple other little things, but uh, then you upload it to your media host, you go over to your website, create a blog post, take the address from the media host for your MP3 file, plug it into a blog post on your site, and the thing over there on the right-hand side with the RSS feed, that happens automatically. You don't have to actually do anything with that. And then the magic happens. Now that you have, once you have an RSS feed in there, this is technically a podcast, and now it's ready for the world to consume in multiple ways. People can use uh, software on their computer called uh, Podcatchers. The most popular one out there is called iTunes. And of course, what iTunes does is every single time you load it up, or if you keep it on, it'll actually check it automatically. It will go to your RSS feed to see if anything's new. And if it is, then they will actually say, okay, oh, there's a new episode. Let me go directly to the media host and send it right over here. All right, so that's how a podcatcher such as uh, iTunes works. And again, if you want to if you want to get a greater understanding of iTunes, go to podcastanswerman.com/itunes. Again, that's podcastanswerman.com/itunes. Now, there are uh, software programs on both the iPhone as well as um, the BlackBerry. There's applications for Android, and I believe there's probably even a- a- an application on the uh, Microsoft phones and and per- possibly even others out there where mobile phones, these smartphones now have applications to subscribe directly to podcast feeds. Okay, my favorite one on the iPhone, by the way, is a program called Pocket Casts. It's all one word, P-O-C-K-E-T-C-A-S-T-S. It's in the App Store. I think it's $1.99, totally worth it. I absolutely love it and it's how I manage all my podcasts. So what I can do is I go to my somebody's website, I see what their RSS feed is, and it actually shows me the address in the URL once I click on their RSS feed. I take that, I type it into my little phone's uh, Pocket Cast application, and from that point forward, every time I load up that application, it checks to see if there's anything on the RSS feed that's new since the last time it found episodes for me. If there is something new, it tells my phone that there's something new. And if it tells my phone that there's something new, my phone will go out to the media host where it know because the RSS feed gave the phone the address, the location of that MP3 file, and it will request that it get downloaded directly into my phone. So I know that that um, is overly simplistic, but that's pretty much how things work. Uh, you basically have RSS feed will go out to everything else. So again, you record your audio. You turn it into an MP3 file. It gets uploaded to your media host. You put it on your website. And after you get the initial thing set up, once everything is initially set up the very first time, all configured and ready to go, those are the four basic steps of producing your podcast. All of this stuff over here on the right-hand side, all of this stuff, happens on behalf of your user and happens automatically. But again, this right here, my friends, is how podcasting works. This is a very basic overview. Well, there you go, my friends. That is the overview of podcasting. Hopefully, your mind is not mush yet because we still have plenty of things to go. This is the end of part one of Learn How to Podcast 101, the video tutorial series. I hope that you'll continue on to part two of this tutorial series where we're going to talk about tagging your MP3 files.